Bronsted Lowry Concept Part 2 Conjugate Purse As we learn in the general properties of acids and bases videos, that strong acids or bases are completely ionized. So the equation is written with one-way arrow. That is, the reaction proceeds in one direction. While weak acids or bases are partially ionized, the equation is written with opposite arrows, which means that the reaction occurs in both directions. Therefore, the process of determining conjugate pairs is accepted for reversible reactions that is, can occur in both directions. But what are conjugate pairs and how are they determined? Let's get discover it together. Conjugate pairs. As we mentioned in the first part, the scientists Bronsted and Lowry relied in their definition on the transfer of the hydrogen ion, the proton, between substances during the reaction. In the reversible reactions, we notice that the acids in the forward reaction donate a proton to the base. And also, when looking at the reverse reaction, we notice that we have an acid and a base, and the acid donate a proton to the base. They notice that the acid in the reactants become a base in the products and is called a conjugate base. And together they form a conjugated pair of acid and base. While the base in the react become an acid in the product, it's called a conjugate acid, and together they also form a conjugated pair of acid and base. Thus, any reversible reaction of an acid with a base according to the bronsted lowry concept involves two conjugate pairs. Let's determine conjugate pairs for each of the following reactions together. Our first step, as we mentioned in the first part, is to consider the equation and notice the change in it. Since, as we see, NH3 is the substance in which the number of its hydrogen atoms increases, then it's a proton acceptor, which means that NH3 is the base in the forward reaction. While the positive ammonium ion is the acid in the reverse reaction and is called a conjugate acid. Therefore, ammonia and the ammonium ion are a conjugated pair of acid and base. While water, as we can see, is the acid in the forward reaction because it's a proton donor, while the hydroxide ion is the base in the reverse reaction and is called the conjugate base. Thus, water and hydroxide ion together also form a conjugated pair of acid and base. Another example, first, it's necessary to consider the equation for determining acid and base. So as we can see, the HCO3- ion is the acid in the forward reaction because it's a proton donor. So in turn, the CO3-2 ion will be its conjugate base. And together, they form a conjugate pair of acid and base. While water is the base in the forward reaction because it's a proton acceptor. And in turn, the hydronium ion 
is the conjugate acid. So they will together be a conjugated pair of acid and base. Hmm. But how can we find the formula of the conjugate acid and the conjugate base in the reactions? So let's learn that together. Conjugate base formula. First, we will figure out how to find the formula of the conjugate base, which means that the following examples are acid. That is, as we know, they will be proton donors. In the first example, HF, as mentioned, is an acid. So it will donate a proton, which means that the number of its hydrogen atoms will decrease and fluoride will be produced. While to determine its charge, we will use the line number. Since HF has zero charge, and because it's an acid, it will donate a proton, and its charge will decrease. As we see, it will acquire one negative charge and form the fluoride I. Another example is H2SO3, which is an acid, so it will be a proton donor. That is, the number of its hydrogen atoms will decrease and HSO3 will be produced. But what about its charge? So, we will use the line number. Where H2SO3 has zero charge, since it's a proton donor, its charge will decrease and it will acquire one negative charge. Another example, in this group, we will also find the conjugate base. But these acids carry a charge. Like the positive ammonium ion, this ion will donate a proton because it's an acid and will be an H3. But what about its charge? We will use the line number, where we will start from number 1 because the charge of NH4 is plus 1. Since it's a proton donor, its charge will decrease and as we see, NH3 charge will be 0, that is, it doesn't have a charge. Another example is HS minus. Here, it's an acid. So, it will donate a proton and become only S. As for the charge, back to the line number, we will start from a negative 1 because the HS charge is a minus 1. Since it's a proton donor, the charge will decrease and it will acquire a 2 negative charge. Thus, the conjugate base is S minus 2. Another example and the same steps will be used. In this set of examples, we will find the conjugate base for the acid, which are from the amine group and carboxylic acid. The difference in these examples is that we need to determine which hydrogen atom will be ionized. And we will start with the amine group, for example, CH3 and H3+, as mentioned, is an acid. So, it will donate a proton, which means that the number of its hydrogen atoms will decrease and CH3 and H2 will be produced. Notice that the ionized hydrogen atom is from the NH bond. By using the line number, as we can see, its charge will be zero 
That is, it doesn't have a charge. Another example is C5, H5, and H+. Is a proton donor, so it will become C5, H5, N. As we can see on the line number, its charge will be zero. That is, it also doesn't have a charge. As for carboxylic acids, as we mentioned in several previous videos, the hydrogen atom that will be ionized is from the OH bond. For example, CH3COOH is an acid. So, it's a proton donor and it becomes CH3COO. And as we can see on the line number, it will acquire one negative charge. Another example of carboxylic acid, and we will follow the same steps. Conjugate acid, formula. Now let's learn how to find the formula of the conjugate acid. This means that the following example are bases of which, as we know, will be a proton acceptors. In the first example, NH3, as mentioned, is a base, so it will accept a proton and the number of its hydrogen atoms will increase and produce NH4. As for its charge, we will also use the line number. Where an H3 has zero charge, and because it's a base, it will accept a proton, and its charge will increase. As we see, it will acquire one positive charge and form the ammonium ion. Another example, and we will follow the same steps. In this set of examples, we will find the conjugate acid for the bases carrying a charge. Like the NO3- ion, which will accept a proton, so the number of its hydrogen atoms will increase and produce HNO3. For its charge, by using the line number, where the charge of NO3 is negative 1, and since it's a proton acceptor, so its charge will increase and become zero. Another example is the PO4 minus 3 ion. It's a base, which means that it's a proton acceptor, so its hydrogen atoms will increase and HPO4 will be produced. As for its charge, as we can see, it will increase, so the formula of the conjugate acid will be HPO4 minus 2. Another example, and we will follow the same steps. In this set of examples, we will find the formula of the conjugate acid of the bases which are from the amine group and carboxylic acids. And we will start with the amines group, for example, CH3 and H2. As mentioned, is the base, so it's a proton acceptor. Thus, the number of hydrogens will increase, forming CH3 and H3. Notice that the hydrogen ion that was added had bonded with nitrogen. As for the charge, as we can see on the line number, CH3 and H3 will acquire one positive charge. Another example 
and we will follow the same steps as before. As for the bases from the group of carboxylic acids, such as CH3COO- which as we know will accept a proton. Notice that the hydrogen ion that was added bonded with the oxygen atom. As for the chart, as we can see on the line number, CH3COOH will have zero charge which means it doesn't have any charge. Another example and follow the same steps as before. In this part, we learned how to identify conjugate pairs. We also learned how to find the formula of the conjugate acid and the conjugate base. So, in the third part of the Bronsted-Lowry concept, we will get acquainted with the amphoteric substances and we will summarize the acids and bases covered by the Bronsted-Lowry concept. So, be with us. Big thanks for watching. At the end, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to receive my new videos.